Where do you start with harmonic analysis? This is always a, a question that we get, and the real key here is to understand what we're looking at. So are we looking at an existing system or new construction? If it's new construction, the first step is probably to meet with the designers and make sure you understand what the goal of the design is to, to reduce or minimize harmonics. Then you want to create a model and determine all of the sources of harmonic current that could occur. Remember, harmonic currents come from the load, so we want to identify what those sources are going to be. We also want to identify power factor correction capacitors and try to model those in the system to look for resonant points. Then we also want to add in linear loads and determine alternate sources like a generator if we're going to have that on the system and then model all those scenarios but with a small bus system and I'll explain that in a couple minutes. If we're going to look at an existing system there's probably a reason why we're modeling or looking at that system. Somebody's determined that there's a harmonic issue. Um, so you want to talk to people from the site, determine what the symptoms are telling you and remember that not all power quality problems are harmonic problems. There could be transients, could be voltage variations and sags and stuff like that. Um, so then we want to evaluate the system how consistent is the load? Are we going to be able to do measurements and determine what that, uh, what that load is all the time? Then we want to take baseline measurements. And those baseline measurements could be five minutes to a month. Depends on really what's one complete load cycle of the power system. So we understand what the harmonics look like at a very heavy load, at a light load, peak and off peak and so forth. We want to be able to turn on and off power factor correction capacitors if we can to determine if resonant points are, are problematic. And then we want to look at alternate solutions and we try to model those in the power system uh, model. And then uh, finally we want to repeat the testing if we do install some solutions on the system. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw out a very simple model to show you what a uh, power system model might look like for harmonics. And again, going back to the idea that this model doesn't need to be very complicated. We have a transformer perhaps, we have the utility, so we have one bus there, one bus here, maybe we have some cable length, we might have another bus here, and we have some harmonic loads over here, maybe some VFDs, and maybe we have um, you know, some other rectifiers and other loads and stuff like that. So as we model those throughout the system, and maybe we also have some linear loads like motors, we're going to identify these harmonic sources and we're going to create what we call constant current sources and push that current back out on the system. And if we have capacitors on the system, we're going to model those capacitors and see how those capacitors interact with harmonic loads. Again, Mostly what we're doing is creating an impedance model. There's a resistance and reactance with utility. There's a resistance and reactance with the transformer, with this cable, with the busway, with these cables. But it's a very simple system. And what we do is we look for current distortion coming out of the drives or the loads. And we look for voltage distortion on the common buses that are going to affect the power system and perhaps put us over the limits of IEEE 519. So now that we've established that we want to look at our existing system or our new construction system and try to figure out if we have a harmonics issue and how to deal with that problem, how does that harmonic model work? I drew it out on a piece of paper here, but basically we're going to model those nonlinear loads as current injection sources. Again, harmonics come from the load. We're going to create an impedance model of the system and we're going to model that system perhaps at multiple different frequencies um, as, as far as whatever the load currents tell us. So we're going to say we're going to model a fifth harmonic impedance. We're going to model a seventh harmonic impedance network. We're going to model a 60 hertz impedance network. And all of those impedance networks are going to be important. That's all done through the software. Capacitors and filters are modeled to identify resonant points. And then we look at scenarios to um, kind of check for optimal solutions. Do we put a harmonic filter in? Do we use phase shifting transformers? But remember, garbage in equals garbage out in a model. So if we don't have a good model, we can't rely on it to give us a good solution. 
Now, for existing systems, if you're relying on measurements to analyze an existing system, don't assume that the measurements are problematic just because you're now seeing significant voltage or current distortion. Um, remember that harmonics are the new normal. You're going to see a lot of really interesting waveforms, but it's not necessarily problematic. Make sure you understand which loads are on and off during your measurements. And again, just because you may exceed the IEEE 519 limits doesn't necessarily mean that you have a problem. Those limits are recommendations and guidelines for trying to understand if you're going to have problems. If you're doing the harmonic analysis, the goal for an existing system is to identify the systems of harmonics or symptoms of harmonics. If you're looking at new construction, you're going to look for possible problems related to harmonics. Once you understand the symptoms of the problems that might occur, then you want to identify the potential solutions that can fix the problem. Then you model or test the solution, depending on if it's a new construction or existing system. And is it a system solution, meaning do you put it on the main bus or do you put it in front of an individual drive? Consider, make sure you consider that loads will change. So today what you have, even in a new construction versus an existing system, the loads are what they are on the model or the design or in the existing system, but make sure you account for that load growth and make sure you avoid future issues because of that change in load. It may not necessarily be more load, it may be less load. So again, those are the kind of things that you have to think about um, when you're doing a harmonic analysis.